Hey, good morning everyone. Dr. Shook here. Hope you're doing well today. Something really important that I want to talk about with you guys uh, in our short videos. I'm going to do video Facebook Live. Try to do one every day or so and talk about very what I think are very important topics that you guys need to know about so that you can heal yourself, so that you can become your own advocate and take your health back. And today I want to talk about something that's very important that a lot of people are not aware of. And and what we're finding is that with thyroid autoimmunity, whether it be Hashimoto's or Graves' disease or any autoimmune condition, but we really know that this is very, um, this is very important for thyroid autoimmunity. And this particular topic is also very important for neurological autoimmunity. So we're talking about things like multiple sclerosis. Okay. What I'm going to talk about today is this. You know what that is? Yeah, right, it's a, it's a sales receipt. Harmless, right? No, no problem with that, you know? No, no problem with it. But you ever wonder what makes these things kind of slippery? You ever wonder that? Makes your sales receipt slippery. It's a chemical. <clears throat> and what we're finding out about chemicals is that there are there are chemicals everywhere in our in our environment that are promoting autoimmunity and in particular these cells receipts what makes them slippery is BPA or bisphenol A okay BPA is a plastic and if you're if you recall you've probably seen before all these different products that are BPA free now they're like these hard plastic bottles and they say BPA free and everybody's trying to avoid BPA. Uh, the reality with this is, is that <clears throat> as it relates to the sales receipts, when you touch these sales receipts, you get the BPA on your skin and it absorbs into your body by touching it. BPA can, and it does, BPA on a molecular level mimics human, some human tissues. That means that the BPA plastic, the chemical, looks a lot like your own human tissues. And in particular, we know it looks like the thyroid, and we know that BPA looks a lot like neurological tissues. So if you are being exposed to BPA, and your immune system is reacting to BPA, then it can attack the BPA, or see it, what it does is it, well, let's, I'm not gonna be too technical here, because I'll go forever, but basically you have an immune response to the BPA when it comes into your body and attaches to your tissues. That's called a neoantigen or a something foreign that is new to your body and your body will attack it. Well, that looks, that, that new foreign thing, the BPA, let's say, looks a lot like your thyroid, your thyroid tissue, and it looks a lot like neurological tissue in the cases of multiple sclerosis or autoimmunity. So the reason that this is so important that we talk about it today is because you need to be reducing your exposure to environmental chemicals because this could be one of the things that's promoting your thyroid or any autoimmune condition. But in particular, we know that the, so that the research that's been done shows us BPA mimics or looks like thyroid tissue. And if you're reacting to the, to the BPA, you could be destroying your own thyroid. The same goes for your neurological tissues. So we need to reduce our exposure to environmental chemicals. We know that BPA is a major one. It's found all over sales receipts, unless the sales receipt roll says BPA free, okay? Unless it says that. They're all over sales receipts. That's why I rarely take sales receipts ever because I don't, I don't wanna touch that stuff. I don't wanna feel it. I don't, I, don't, I don't want the BPA in my body. So you need to understand this. And here's the thing that's really important, guys. There are a lot of things that drive autoimmunity Environmental chemicals is going to be one of the three major categories of things that drive the autoimmune process. So, <clears throat> environmental chemicals, things that drive autoimmunity, environmental chemicals, lots of them, lots that I'm sure we don't know yet. Partially digested food proteins that get into your body through intestinal permeability or leaky gut, chronic infections. Okay, so where do we start to try to help ourselves to feel better? We start with Number one, most people in most cases should start with dietary changes because most people's diets are terrible. If you've already made all the dietary changes or you've made dietary changes and you're tired of struggling with that, then you need 
further workup and investigation. That's the reality of it. There's just only so much trial and error that you can do, but dietary changes are reasonable. Dietary and lifestyle changes are reasonable if you have not tried that. But those are the three categories. Partially digested food proteins that you can have an immune response to that can promote autoimmunity. Chronic infections, lots and lots of different types of infections from bacteria to different types of, of uh, fungi to uh, viral infections um, to vector-borne diseases like Lyme. There are lots of different ways that you, different types of, of infections that can promote the autoimmune process. And sometimes you only know those if, unless if you test for them. Um, the other thing are environmental chemicals, and that's what we're talking about today. BPA, BPA being all over receipts. Listen, <clears throat> if you're drinking out of any plastics, you need to stop, period. Even if it's like BPA free and it's the hard plastic and it's great, you need to stop. If your children are using BPA pacifiers, plastics, I'm, I'm sorry. I Listen, we did it with all of our kids because we thought it was right. Um, I did. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, um, we're going to find out that all of the hard plastics that are like BPA free are going to be just as bad, if not worse, than BPA. Mark my words. Mark the, the, the words of Aristo Vojadani, uh, neuro he's a neuroimmunologist. Um, he is a phenomenal person, and he's a researcher. And this is what his research is showing us and <clears throat> what, we, what we believe is going to be true. Um, just be, be safe and <laughs> cut plastics out of your life. Don't eat out of them. Uh, just do everything you can to reduce your exposure and your children's exposure, which is huge. It's huge. Uh, you know, one of the things my kids do is they play with plastic toys in the bathtub, and I keep telling my wife, "This is this is not good. We cannot do this." And I'm just going to take them out. Um, I've got to. I mean, I, I, you know, sometimes I mean, even I, you know, we str I struggle with a lot of the things that are um, conveniences, and that you know, our kids have all these toys and everything else and it's just ridiculous I mean it's ridiculous because they're getting exposed to all these terrible chemicals so I want to share that with you guys it's really important something else that's really important that I think you guys need to know about is um, well I'm gonna talk about this in another video guys because I actually have to drop my car off right now so that I can get it um, serviced because this weekend I'm going someplace very special and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys, not today, but I'm gonna be going, we're going someplace very special. We're gonna be masterminding with a lot of people that are in the natural healthcare space that are trying to change the world. We're trying to make an impact, trying to educate, trying to educate people. And I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys soon, but not right now, okay? So I'm um, backing in here, dropping my car off, and I hope this has helped you guys out. But what are we talking about today? BPA. BPA is bad, BPA is all over sales receipts, don't get them. BPA mimics, looks a lot like thyroid tissue. It's been implicated in thyroid autoimmunity, neurological autoimmunity like multiple sclerosis. What are the three categories of things that drive autoimmunity? Partially digested food proteins, environmental chemicals, BPA is relevant for that, um, and then chronic infections. Where, where do we start? We typically start with diet. We start with diets that are very dense in nutrition, very um, highly nutritious foods and we see um, what we can do there. Um, and then beyond that, what we wanna do is um, gotta test usually and figure things out if that doesn't work. But anyway guys, appreciate you a lot. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to just subscribe to our channel somewhere here, you can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you. So hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you and I hope you guys have a great day.